you will get the, the notice that you have to accept it. Okay. Uh, well, hello, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, depending where you are all over the world. Uh, my name is Alexander Herzeg, and I'm, uh, as Jorge in promoted me for this time, I'm the call manager or conference manager, or technical guy, let's put it this way. Uh, I'm glad that I'm able to help with uh, handling the, the technical part of the meetings. And I would like to wel welcome you to the today's uh, discussion or conference table or uh, round table uh, based on which is named the seniors 55 plus are embracing the use of AI tools in the silver economy. And we have a great discussants, our panelists in the next two hours or how, how long we need from uh, uh, Dr. Franz Brachun, uh, Dr. Luigi Campanella, uh, Monique Epstein, uh, we have Anna Grabowska, we have Dr. Joze Grichar and uh, Dr. David Mlanga. I hope I pronounced the name correct. And uh, I hope we will enjoy the meeting. If you need any help, anything, uh, uh, we, you, can, uh, uh, you can contact me via chat or if you have any uh, any questions for our discussants you can also do it through the chat or you can ask them during or after their their presentation uh, i would like now to ask dr grichard to say a few words at the beginning since he's the the guy thank you uh, we were concerned about what you are doing and what you are learning in using the upcoming or current tools uh, for artificial intelligence. It was very much new to us after November last year. Uh, to be honest, I learned from my son about the technology who had learned from his son and his son didn't talk much, he was just using it. My impression is that students are already in, all over, they are using this technology. I would not speak generally about technology, I would think more specifically about the chat GPT, because this is now exploding and the experience we have so far is based on that tool. We believe that this is very important for the seniors. Well, for all generations. However, seniors are the group of people who may be the last in the road to get engaged with this technology. Students are already in. People in the companies will have to do it because the employers will expect they are using any possible support when needed. And not really anybody is taking care of seniors, retired people, older people, however we uh, need them. So this was an opportunity to come together, talk about what we learn from each other. This is the message about the meeting in general. And now to be more specific, let's go to the individual presenters. I do not see the name of oh, Franz Brachun is already here. We don't see the picture, Franz, but Franz Brachun is here. And uh, Alexander, please start uh, providing the floor to the presenters. Alexander, switch on mic. Yeah, <laughs> lucky me. Okay, I would like to, sorry, I would like to invite Dr. Franz Brachun, uh, a Chief Data Officer and Executive Assistant to the Management Board uh, of Nova Ljubljanska Banka in Slovenia. Uh, his uh, presentation is Artificial Intelligence AI, AI, AI Technology for the Third Age. Uh, Dr. Brachun, the floor is yours in case you need uh, the... You can, if you want to, to present, you can have the presentation screen as well, please. Okay. 
Dr. Bračun, can you hear us? Dr. Bračun. In order to save time, perhaps we would ask Luigi Campanella to be he's the out. first. Yeah. But he's not going uh, Yeah. Luigi, can you can you be the first one since Dr. Uh, Dr. Bracun is not responding at the moment? Yeah. No luck as well. Luigi, can you hear us? Sorry for this technical problems. Luigi, can you hear us? Uh, please unmute. Luigi, can you unmute yourself? Dr. Bracun has a problem with internet connection. He, he does not open the, the microphone. Yeah, yeah, I, I can you see can that. You can see it on his side, so you have to wave the hands. <laughs> and do it with intelligence, artificial intelligence, reach it. I can, yeah, I'm asking him to unmute with the... Okay, Luigi, can you hear us now? Can you talk? Okay. Yes, great. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, Luigi, if you could be the first one, since Dr. Bracun has an issues with the connection, so we would need to change the, the, the order of the discussant, if it's not a problem for you. Uh, so when a um, few words uh, of introduction, when we speak about uh, artificial intelligence, and we can find it uh, on the literature, on the newspaper, everywhere, because it's a very actual problem, uh, generally we have uh, two points focused on. The first one is ethics that is concerning about our privacy that can be damaged by artificial intelligence. Uh, sharing of knowledge without any possibility to distinguish between public and private knowledge. The second point is uh, connected with the loss of uh, human uh, workers in the sense that many places of work can be in the time substituted by machine learning and artificial intelligence. It was computed that in the next three years, about 80 million of workers can be substituted by artificial intelligence. So these two points, ethics and the market of workers are both negative for artificial intelligence. But I like to let you reflect about one that can be considered the positive and so about which we can see a balance between negative and positive 
aspects of this new powerful uh, resource. As you know, in the recent uh, uh, report, we can find that the uh, economy actually is going to suffer a fall due to the fact that the consumptions, both in Eastern and the, in Eastern countries, are during the last uh, five years, three years more, are reduced. So consumption makes uh, less economy if they decrease. So we have now a situation for which economy suffers the loss of some consumers. What can do artificial intelligence in order to contrast this economy form? We have a, a process in our society that is diffused practically over all the world, that is the aging of the mean age of population. When I was a boy, the mean ages was about 68, 69 in Italy, 70. Now is about 82, 83. That means that we have a population that is older than in the past. This population is a, a group of citizens who were not teached, were not educated to some of the new technologies by which our society at the moment uh, proceeds. And I want to, to let you reflect about the three aspects of this. First one, health, nutrition, and food. By the, what we call a wearable sensor, the artificial intelligence can guarantee to older persons, that means to persons who, who are not familiar with the electronic technologies, can guarantee, I say, a control continuously and everywhere of their health and the optimization of, of diet with attention to the best foods, with the reference also to what now is very popular in Western countries, that is nutraceutical approach to pathologies. That means uh, to use less drugs and more suitable foods, able to function, to act as uh, uh, drugs. The second point I, I wish you is the movement and mobility. When we are older, our capacity of movement are reduced. And so for many, part of the population is about 20%. We have problems of movement, of mobility. This as, as a result that for these people it's uh, sacrificed the free time events, the enjoyment, the full enjoyment of our cities the touristic and tourism, the touristic uh, travels and the tourism uh, enjoyment. So this uh, difficulty to move 
and to uh, as, uh, to be able to go uh, suffer safety everywhere can be balanced by artificial intelligence able with the transport integrated system in our city to guarantee this uh, movement even to persons that are old and so not to be able to move uh, so e easily. The, the third uh, point is that one of the ICT technologies. By ICT technologies, artificial intelligence can guarantee and ensure information and communication services to older persons. Persons, I repeat, that are not familiar with the electronic uh, procedures so that uh, the possibility to have uh, uh, artificial intelligence as a light can be important for them. Communication and information are the basis of democracy. You can, democracy means participation, but you cannot participate to any process if you don't know well it. So to help older persons who have not uh, studied, we have were not educated to electronic technologies means to help them to be part of democratic countries. And so to be able to take part to the life of our society. So we can say that uh, to conclude that uh, artificial intelligence as surely negative points and the two more relevant are continuously reported on uh, our debates, our magazine journals, TV and so on. And that are the ethics and the market of uh, the workers effects. But we have to look also at the artificial intelligence as at a pre precious resource able to uh, make restart economy, make to make active the old age of a 20% of population. And this 20% is a, a rate that is going to increase because the mean age of population during the last 10 years is continually increasing. So we have uh, a resource that uh, on one side has a incredible, great te technical value, but also probably an economic and consequently a social uh, uh, ability to, to give help to the increase of our society. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Campanella. Uh, I uh, for the, your uh, presentation or, or short uh, uh, lecture about contribution of AI to the third age silver consumptions. Uh, okay, Dr. Brachun uh, just messaged that he's still having uh, technical issues for the connection. With the connection, so if it's okay, I would like to ask our next uh, presenter, 
uh, Miss Monique Epstein uh, from uh, founder. She's a founder and director of E Seniors Network for Inclusion of Seniors and Active Active Aging from in France uh, to give us a short presentation on Chat GPT. Only good questions get good answers. Miss Epstein, your uh, the floor is yours. So please. Hi. <laughs> Um, hello, everybody. Um, I will uh, I will be very short, in fact, because uh, I uh, uh, did prepare um, a, a little text, and the text you can uh, it's online. I mean, you you can see it. My text is, in fact, uh, it resumes to the fact that I say that. Uh, ChatGPT is wonderful, but you need to know how to use it. And but this is true for everything linked to internet. And I know this pretty much because I've been working with internet uh, since uh, 1975 or seven in the Weizmann Institute. In fact, it was nearly internet. Huh? So I, I know pretty much about internet that the most important, uh, if you want to good, have good answers, is to know to ask the right question. And ask the right question, uh, at the time, people were using uh, words, and the words were linked by and, or, and uh, without this word, and without that word, and so on. Way mathematic, uh, like a mathematical formula. And, um, I, uh, as I'm teaching, I mean, uh, my association is teaching seniors uh, how to use internet. We are always trying to tell to the people, if you just try to word, you will get a million answers and nothing is going to come out of it. But if you want to have re really good answers, uh, you must be precise. You must think, take time to think before you ask questions. So that's a way, way. Um, simple thing I wanted to say, and the second thing I want to say, uh, I see one use uh, of ChatGPT, and uh, specifically in robotics, uh, that's where I see the best use for seniors, um, and this is when you have what they call a butler, a companion, uh, some, uh, 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 industrial business people like to to sell robots for people, for seniors at home, uh, to have a, a kind of a companion. And in fact, uh, I have seen that in European projects in Horizon. I tested quite a lot of them, and it's always most boring. I mean, the conversation is impossible. I, I, I'm bored. I, I can't, could not sell it to somebody. And the only thing, uh, and it's most, it would be most important to improve uh, the conversation level and to adapt it to the seniors and to their interests. And then a robot, like a, a butler, a companion robot, uh, could be perhaps interesting to fight against loneliness and so on. So that's for the moment one of the most interesting thing, things uh, I um, I would say about ChatGPT, I, I see about uh, ChatGPT, about these dialogues, uh, and um, yeah, that's it. I don't want to speak too long, and uh, I'm sorry, but I I um, I cannot stay also too long. But I really appreciate the initiative of, of Jose, Professor Jose Grigla, and I would like uh, to continue and uh, work on that subject. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we have to be more, to, to, to go forward and work on that subject and see uh, how it could be interesting for seniors in which direction. And um, okay, that's all. Thanks for listening to me. And, <laughs> and again, Thanks for this organizing that uh, nice and most important conference. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Epstein, uh, uh, for your short uh, 
presentation. We have uh, read your paper, which we we have as a as a part of our our invitation. Uh, I will just check with uh, Dr. Brachun if he can join now. Dr. Brachun, if hello. You... Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Hopefully it will work. Sorry for this, but I really have a problem with my computer. Probably due to I have two different systems, Teams and Zoom, and they are fighting each other. So something feels wrong. But actually, uh, when we are talking about artificial intelligence, we have a lot of different ideas what this means for whom. And actually, I'm coming from industry and I think with AI quite mainly from the point of view building services supported by IE, AI. And what I recognized during my experience on job, because I have also a lot of students coming in our organization, less students, and they have a lot of knowledge, technical knowledge, but they lack more experience how to work with this technology, meaning they are not so uh, critical about this technology because they are starting to believe that this technology is, let's say, uh, uh, given for granted. But usually you should be very critical. You have critical mind to see if the results produced by such kind of solutions are really something that we can trust with. And I believe that this um, topic about how much can we trust solutions based on AI is really important. And here I see that actually uh, more senior people can help a lot of uh, youngsters. We are coming to this, uh, let's say, uh, active, uh, active um, phase or daily life. Uh, during my experience with these students, actually, uh, what is, from my point of view, uh, quite interesting that they are very good, let's say, how to build things, how to build things in, I call it, in lab. But uh, when and we are start to think about option for some services, then we should also put in front of us people who will use this kind of solutions. And here is quite big gap because they have technical know-how, but they don't have more, let's say, social uh, part of um, the solutions. And I believe that here uh, in the next few years, uh, we as a community will have to put a lot of efforts to be sure that we understand this technology, not from technical point of view, but also from sociological point of view, psychological point of view, because the solutions will gradually uh, starting to emerge as assistance for all our colleagues working, particularly people who are uh, dealing with, uh, let's say, more creative work, because we know that ChatGPT and solutions like ChatGPT can actually tremendously support such kind of work. And uh, here, I believe that this uh, social and psychological uh, dimension of the solutions will be very important and uh, I believe that uh, this dimension is actually lacking further research and experimentation because we are very advanced on technical side, but we are lacking behind on this more, let's say, um, social, psychological regulation, etc. And here I see that we can learn together a lot younger people and let's say people in our ages because we have quite experience which is not uh, yet um, let's say in the heads of younger people this is my experience and my view of this technology 
because I believe technology has um, quite, uh, let's say, a positive future if we will be um, smart enough to use it properly. Because uh, as it is the case with each technology, it can be used for good or for bad. I hope we will use it for good. That's short uh, view from my point of you really part of this uh, community sharing views and experience because I believe that this sharing of information view is very important. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bracun. Uh, just a short uh, note that uh, there are some uh, comments in the chat box so you can see them, read them. Uh, we have from uh, Osnot Lustig, uh, we have uh, from uh, Tom Mot Motel from Boston, we have several comments so if you want to put some uh, questions or any notes, just please also you can use the chat box. Uh, I would now like to ask our next presenter. That's uh, Dr. Anna Grabowska, head of Autodesk Academic Partner and Academy of Third Age, founder of the Distance Education Center at Gdańsk University of Technology from Poland. And the uh, presentation topic is artificial intelligence and Erasmus Plus peer train Moodle cloud case study. Dr. Grabowska, the floor is yours. Many thanks for an invitation. I think it's really a good moment that uh, I'm going to share some experience. Um, my seniors from Academy of Third Age have got with AI and also with European projects. So because uh, I'm an engineer, I usually would like to test uh, the theory. So um, I'm coming to two links, uh, which I put on chat. The first one uh, is a kind of um, a summary uh, about chat GPT and artificial intelligence in higher education, which uh, this publication, it's not a very big one, but uh, uh, very valuable and was prepared by UNESCO. And the second link, uh, uh, it, it, uh, it goes uh, to a um, short course I prepared uh, for uh, a European project, which is peer train. Uh, and uh, this chapter is, is about, uh, if I can just go there, benefits and threats of digital technology. Um, the way that usually we prepared such a kind of modules for European trainings uh, is just looking in the internet and finding the main point on some content to prepare a chapter. And this time I decided to ask ChatGPT for preparing the whole module. And that was my experiment, uh, which was done not only with preparing the content, but also with uh, um, translation. And uh, should I say that everything lasted for two hours? Uh, usually I um, will go for the work for at least uh, one week. And this time it was very short. But the most interesting thing was ask my learners, uh, elderly, seniors, um, about the quality, uh, about recognition, who was responsible for preparing such a chapter. And uh, the results was astonishing. Uh, they didn't notice that uh, it was done by artificial intelligence. They expected me responsible for, for this module. Uh, which is, I think, very interesting. And uh, those uh, links I put on the chat, they are going just straight ahead to online course, uh, which is open for guests. So you can go there and just have a look um, how the module was prepared. And uh, we are just uh, in the phase that uh, people are going and evaluate the results. And uh, I do hope it, it will be really interesting. I'm just before, so I cannot share the results but I will do it later. So um, in, in fact, if anybody is interested in uh, taking part in testing phase, just let me know. Uh, I also put a kind of summary of uh, my um, input for today uh, as a short article. Uh, so um, you can go there. And if you need my email address, just to confirm they would, they would, they would, they, uh, that you really would like just to continue going down so go to this email address and send me message with your name and email address that you would like to test 
uh, it's not obligatory. This is just a, a kind invitation for everybody who would like to go. But um, uh, all those, uh, what I did, in fact, you've got uh, just uh, um, a possibility to go straight ahead to the content of the module, uh, which was prepared by AI. And uh, the phase that I'm going to invite you is on a Moodle platform prepared by coordinator. And the coordinator will register all testers on their platform, and it will be possible just to continue communication and cooperation with coordinator from Germany. Um, should I say that uh, in my case, using AI, it's just uh, a custom for each day. I cannot say that I'm starting communication with AI. And I also have got Alexa at home. <laughs> so uh, I, I was sharing uh, my experience with Alexa, which is uh, the first uh, um, solution uh, I've got uh, in connection with AI. And uh, we also organize workshops for workshop for seniors about AI. And uh, the workshop was prepared together with young people. So um, if, if you are interested in, I can share also the contents, although it's in Polish, but it's possible very, very easy to translate in any language uh, you, you are using. So um, my input for today is just saying that uh, it's really very useful to start working with AI, which can help us in our everyday work. Thank you. Dr. Grabowska, uh, thank you for the input also in the chat. I will save uh, everything what was be uh, what was put in the chat and I will send that to Professor Grichar. So he will have that as well as a kind of wrap up of this uh, meeting. Uh, now the next panelist is uh, Dr. Grichar. Uh, <clears throat> Professor Emeritus from University of Maribor, Slovenia, and Secretary of the Profes Professors Emeriti Network, and Secretary of eSeniors 55 Plus Network. Uh, the presentation topic is Seniors 55 what Plus you, Using AI Tools. So please, Dr. Grichard, the floor is yours. And Thank you. First, first I would like to share with you two impressions I got when I was using the chat GPT. One, behind is a huge machinery. Big investments. A few weeks ago, a message uh, was mailed that Microsoft only is investing 10 billion of dollars into uh, open AI company, 10 billion dollars Microsoft alone, and the share they will get will be about 33%. So a lot of money is has already been spent and is spending every day. And this is giving a sig signal that a major technology is coming up and we have to do our best to exploit it at no charge. This is something what we humans never had before. Secondly, the languages. We can ask the language in, I think, more than 60 languages. Slovenian included. We are a very small nation, two million, and okay, <laughs> maybe one more, uh, more million of Slovenes in many places in the world, and that's it. And now we can ask questions in our language and get answers in our language. And my experience is that the language is very good. It's not just so-so, it's good. Terms are good. Uh, the grammar is good, so wonderful what we have about asking the right question. When we go to Google, we ask about 
funding something which is published somewhere. Now with this technology, we can ask questions and get the answer. And the answer we can get may be much more powerful than what, what we already know because our database, my personal database, is not as big as the chat can provide. So it's something very important and big. Of course, it will improve, it will grow. But already, so far, we can say it is too good to be ignored. My topic was about two questions. Is it important to seniors to start using the tools, any tool? The practice will show us which are the best. But so far, there are not so many choices. My personal experience is about uh, chat GPT. Uh, there are many reasons to do so. Health, uh, several services, uh, financial management of uh, seniors, uh, travel arrangements, which many reasons why to start using the tool. My impression is that what is important is help them to start using it. They may discover that it's not for them. Or they may discover it's good for several areas, aspects. They will never know without trying. And I agree with what Monique Epstein said. We have to try. We have to learn. We have to work with technology. The second point is how best practices can be shared. Luigi already mentioned several ideas. I would add that a meeting like we have today is good for the beginning, but there are several more options. What can be done and how we could work together? Let me ask one question. We are in various associations, networks. How do we collaborate? Basically, we don't. Because we are so busy in our own network, our own association, and we don't have time and much interest about what others are doing. Here we are coming to something which is important to all humans all over the world, and would be great to be able to share information about who is doing what. Like Anna Grabowska mentioned what she is doing. One opportunity would be websites interlinking. Do you have a website of your organization, of your network, association? Do you have a sub, sub part of that website devoted to AI? Most probably not yet. Can we do that? So we would be able to find the directions or ways in a very simple way about who is doing what and how we can learn from each other. And here I would have one or two questions. What we together can assist in proposing networks, associations, our companies to open up, to share with the others. How can networks collaborate? I can share with you an experience in Slovenia about working with the libraries. And now we are talking with librarians to open up two possibilities for their members. One, when the member of the library would like to install a link to the, to the tool, somebody in the library would help how to do it. It is not very complicated. However, it's complicated enough if you don't know how to do it. The other point is, that the libraries would have open access to the tool 
So whenever a visitor would like to ask a question, he or she can just use a computer in the library and use the tool without having any installation on his or he, her phone or PC. One opportunity would be third age universities. We are all faced with several similar problems and maybe working together could be beneficial to all of us. In conclusion, I would like to say that, yes, I'm a bit concerned about who will do something for the seniors. To be honest, as I mentioned before, my son helped me and he was helped by his son. And there are many people who may, be, may not be helped by anyone. What can be arranged for them? And secondly, as I mentioned already, this is just too good not to be exploited in the maximum possible way. Are there limitations? Are there potential dangers? Of course they are. They are everywhere. Internet in general opened up many questions, but several security measures were implemented and we feel quite safe and secure when using internet. Here we will see something similar. Your ideas about doing something and how to do it are appreciated and we expect that maybe this is just the first meeting of the topic and those who may have interest are welcome to come together and let's try what we together could do. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gritschar, uh, for the for the presentation and uh, for the questions, which will probably be uh, of the interest for the future. Uh, I would like to call uh, our last panelist, uh, Dr. Uh, David Mlanga, senior researcher of University of Johannesburg from South Africa. But to be honest, I don't he I don't see him present. I neither see him, so maybe we'll just skip it uh, uh, and open for the discussion. Yeah, yeah. so since uh, Dr. Mlanga is not here, I'm opening the floor for any of your inputs. Any questions, any thoughts, basically feel free to join the discussion and uh, to contribute to this topic. Mr. Mr. Tom, Tom, go ahead. Uh, I've used chat to uh, provide my commentary, so I won't go over it. But I think the point Monique raised about posing the right questions has many different aspects to it. But coupled with that is recognition of the reliability of AI chat mechanisms the power of the AI, GPT, uh, chat GPT and others is the enormous access to databases and the processing, but that still is computer processing. And as we all know, in the worldwide databases of everything that's ever been published for various uh, objectives, some of which are good and some of which are not good, there is false, misleading, incorrect information. And again, it's up to the user of the application to very carefully evaluate what they're receiving. Uh, I have found ChatGPT uh, and I have taken a subscription to the paid version, which in the US is $20 a month to see what difference there is between the responses I get with that uh, versus the free ChatGPT. Um, because I do find it so useful, essentially providing me with a large number of executive assistants or staff members that bring back to me within seconds something that provides a basis for my thinking and planning of discussions and talks and presentations that would take me at least a week, if not more, to put together myself. I'll leave it at that. I can just comment on that because uh, 
uh, regarding what is true or what is not. So we, uh, for the one of the research we did on uh, on our research on silver uh, economy, we asked the chat GPT to present us the examples of the Croatian uh, silver entrepreneurs who started their businesses when they were 55 plus. So we got the names which are known, uh, which are Croatian uh, citizens, but the data uh, connected to them was completely misleading and it was not true because uh, it was just from somewhere and the data we got was uh, not even connected with them. So that is the, the, so yeah, we got it in five minutes, all the text and all the examples we asked, but then, then we found it was rubbish. So we had to, to throw it away and uh, start using it, start uh, searching uh, on the old fashioned way. So we, are, we were looking for ourselves and by ourselves. So yeah, but for, as you said, Tom, uh, for, for some reason, for some things it's great, you can get all the data really fast, but the issue is, is it correct? Uh, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, and, I have a question perhaps to uh, to everyone and, uh, and in particular also to the speakers. And I saw also Justina was uh, posting an interesting article about ageism. I was wondering uh, whether you think that generative AI can um, change, perhaps improve the relationship between uh, uh, older and younger people, between seniors and juniors. Um, I, I'm thinking back to summer school, and I posted a link to that summer school of digital humanism that happened last week, where um, groups were working, um, uh, assisted by generative AI, and a, a very simple template that uh, that, that uh, was programmable and in which you can input a lot of your information. So you can actually input your own information and then get a chatbot running on your documents or on your images or on your collections of material, the things that you have, which uh, I found was uh, so easy to use uh, and uh, really increased um, the, the level of interaction in group work. Uh, so for me, there was a positive example where I can see actually that there could be a dialogue improvement between younger and older people. Perhaps I'm talking a little bit academically here, but, uh, you know, that kind of setting where people are interested, of course, in, in, in also in the intellectual debate, but still. So I'd like to, to hear um, uh, what, what your views on that. Is it, is it going to increase the gap or reduce the gap? Any thoughts on the on the polls? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'll just give Tom up, and then uh, Anna, you can go after the Tom. I think the Tom wants the answer. Wants to answer. I uh, I couldn't agree more with what you said, Paul. Um, I think at the very basic, if you have an interest, the dialogue that goes on will be intergenerative in terms of relationships and exchange of information. Yeah, that, that is the point. Mm -hmm. Anna, go ahead. If I can say something coming back to what uh, ChatGPT generates, it's really true that uh, after generation, this uh, part of uh, content, uh, somebody who is an expert uh, um, in this uh, topic must check it very carefully. So uh, when I prepared um, everything, uh, especially references were prepared by me. I didn't ask ChatGPT about references because this is the most weak point. It's uh, This is my opinion of ChatGPT preparing references. But on the other hand, coming back to the question about intergenerational some kind of cooperation. We also did uh, an experiment this year with students from architecture department. I asked them uh, for using um, AI uh, for developing the first uh, part, uh, or let's say uh, proposals for different buildings using DAL and different uh, AI applications. So the students did it and I've got a special film um, recorded on uh, YouTube uh, how they did it. So it's a kind of uh, um, summary um, and they started with AI and then they develop real project as they diploma work. 
So it was a kind of cooperation between elderly, as I am, from Academy of Third Age, and also professors from architecture department and young people. And the presentation was done during a meeting for elderly. So it means that it's possible to cooperate. And especially my elderly students, they were really very much satisfied with presentation delivered by youngsters. Thank you. Thank you. Any other insights? Uh, we have uh, lots of uh, writing in the chat box. Uh, so lots of different uh, examples, what is done, what is what can be done, what is being done with AI. So any other, Joze? When we talk about how reliable the tool is, it is, Maybe important to consider how data related to something what we would like to know are digitalized and available. This is what I believe is coming that the countries, not just only a single uh, organization, but the countries, will have to consider about major investment into digitalization of, let's say, cultural heritage. For years, major companies like Microsoft, Google, uh, and uh, GDP, uh, uh, OpenAI, are investing big money into digitalizing of everything. How far are you in your country? In our country, we are discovering that there is so much to be done, but has to be digitalized and it takes time and money. However, it's very much needed. And uh, without having data available, digitalized and available, there is no tool which can find it. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Michael. Yes, I, I'm looking at, at Francis' comment and uh, about uh, sort of reliability and whether you can trust uh, where your data is coming from. Looking back to the comment about um, uh, self-diagnosis, uh, I'm very concerned that, that I, I want to know where the data is cut, where the data that that whatever mechanism is feeding me uh, is where, where is it getting its data. Uh, uh, chat GPT, I've used chat GPT only a couple of times and I've seen lots of um, junk answers. Uh, so I, I, I do worry a little bit. If, if I were trying to self-diagnose, I think I would go to uh, WebMD rather than let chat GPT find everything it wants uh, out there. Everything it can. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps I can also react to that. Um... So by the reliability, my experience, for example, with several tools, I'm and recently with Claude.ai, which I use a lot for summarize my standard question to Claude AI, which is a little bit like Chat GPT, is um, summarize and criticize this article. Uh, and actually the criticize part is the most interesting, of course. So uh, I noticed that over the past uh, roughly six weeks, the answers of Claude AI became ever more polite. So uh, the critical part uh, got eroded. Um, then I started uh, asking, give me a, a, a strict, a severe criticism of this article, you know, which was more revealing. But then I thought, hey, I'm starting to put in here a psychological element, namely my raising of the prompt strict is already suggesting a certain type of tone of answer or a certain type of uh, nature of answer, which makes it even more unreliable, you might say. So I think there we are uh, still having a lot um, to experiment um, and, and it's definitely risky. So uh, in this uh, risky in the sense that we may underestimate that it's actually not only the tool, but it's also our relationship to the tool. It's almost as if you have a relationship with an evolving personality at the other side. And that personality will respond differently depending upon the way you phrase your questions. And I that I think that's an, um, 
somewhat familiar aspect of psychology and, and, and social relationships, but also <laughs> unfamiliar aspects to it. Fascinating, but, um, but uh, a lot of learning still to, to be done, I think. Jörg? Um, uh, well, uh, I would like to revert to what uh, Jose has said about uh, heritage. Uh, and uh, um, there are important um, activities on the way of the UNESCO, for instance, in, in Ukraine now, especially Odessa, Kiev, but also other places. It, it's concerning uh, uh, cathedrals as well as museums, uh, major objects, because they're all under danger being attacked by, by bombs or whatever. So uh, this is a very big issue right now. Um, I'm from the Institute for the Danube region and, and I know about these activities a little bit. So uh, probably AI is, is helpful in, in that respect. Uh, but there can also be dangers of AI. We had uh, a problem. Um, maybe I, I, I add this uh, totally different. Um, it's, it's about... Um, um, lawyers now uh, claiming uh, money uh, from, from many people and this is a big issue in germany austria may, maybe also in other countries uh, because of for instance using uh, photos it happened that uh, we have uh, taken a photo on, on our website which uh, about 10 years ago uh, is a, from writers <laughs> and and it's, it was still on on our uh, our website, because, despite of the fact that the whole thing is 10 years ago. So uh, still, um, uh, we were uh, forced to, to pay. We, we could uh, talk it over, but you have no chance, actually. What, what we ask uh, uh, lawyers, uh, and there are already specialized lawyers, uh, to, uh, to uh, try to, to help uh, victims, let's say. Um, and, and one has to take care. Whatever one is publishing, one has to take care a lot more than, than in our days, probably of, of our studies. Uh, and, and this is also something uh, where AI is, is uh, involved, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else, any other thoughts? Uh... It looks we will have a lot to discuss and a lot to be prepared. Yeah, perhaps uh, if I made uh, another example related to what Jose said and about the languages. Uh, also at that summer school, there was a very charming and interesting and important initiative run by the Free University of Amsterdam in Ghana, where they are going into uh, uh, traditional medicine. So actually really in uh, the outback, you might say. Uh, and build their uh, large language model that can actually understand the local language. And there are many languages there. So, of course, that had to be built. And with that, they can actually uh, record approaches of traditional medicine and see how that can interleave with, uh, let's say, Western medicine. So, you know, uh, where part many of the deliveries of babies are done under traditional medicine, but there are also scanners and there is also a visit to the hospital and, and all of that. So their objective is to uh, actually capture that local and traditional knowledge and integrate that uh, into the larger healthcare system. But for that, you need to lower the threshold and really talk to people in their own language. And that's actually possible with these uh, um, large language models. I think uh, so. I think very, very interesting. Uh, the, the question is with, as I think also for other forms of digitization, is it scalable? Can you go from a project to something that uh, covers a country or a continent? And I don't know uh, the answer to that. Any, any other thoughts, uh, insights? Luigi? Yeah, yes. Uh, I think that uh, what has changed during uh, the last 10 years is the correlation between uh, question and answer. Before uh, artificial intelligence, we are accustomed to have uh, questions and to look for an answer to our questions. Actually, it's completely changed. We have the answer to everything, looking for questions. So this... Uh, market, because it's a market between offer and request, is the, is the rule of the market. 
completely new is not easy to be managed because uh, you see we are accustomed to a situation completely different now artificial intelligence put at your availability a lot of answer how many are the questions able to re to look for these answers and who is able to produce the questions that can exploit the answer already obtained, this is a, a very, very crucial change. And uh, I think that is uh, really uh, the focus. We need uh, of some uh, rules, but not rules uh, by laws but uh, rules by minds that are able to give order to this disordered situation. When we we'll obtain this, probably we will see the advantages of artificial intelligence and not the problems and the damages it can produce. Till we have not this ability to management, we will speak together as we are doing now with different arguments, all correct, all right, but all coexisting. Luigi. Looking if there are some some more no uh, okay uh -huh. if someone else has something of okay. uh, Guillermo yeah yeah just go ahead yes uh first of all I, I'm very happy to be here, you know, with so many old friends <laughs> I had seen for a while. Uh, it's very interesting because taking on what Luigi said and Paul, you know, there are so many different uses. You know, I mean, I used to work for digital equipment and we were doing AI, you know, some 40 years ago, you know, already. And I remember, you know, the early days of Doctor and Eliza, you know. So ChatGPT today is pretty much, you know, a little bit improved version of what we used to do with Doctor and Eliza. They were just parsing words. Now we are parsing into a huge database of knowledge uh, collected from, you know, database repositories all over the world. But, you know, Luigi's question is, reminds me of the Oracle of Delphos, you know, in Greece, you know, where you could ask a question, but depending on how you ask the question, you'd get your answer. So it's pretty much like that right now, you know, because uh, the, the other side, which is the AI version, they don't really know how to understand our intention when we are asking a question. So they try to build it up from syntax. Uh, and that can yield, you know, different paths depending even on how you order the words in your question, you know. So, but I think it's very important what Paul was saying, Paul Timmers, uh, it is very important to start collecting and preserving uh, languages or customs that are about to be extinct and in societies that have been reduced to very small sizes, you know, like in Ghana, I believe that's what he said, you know. Uh, so uh, I think that there is use. We, we are in the very early stages, but we have to learn to talk. Uh, and the tool has to learn to, to understand. So that's only uh, going to be achieved through interaction. I believe that the millions of kids, you know, that are using ChatGPT will, if properly collected and treated, will help train, you know, the tool on the other side to better understand and modulate what is our intent when we are putting a question, you know. Uh, that's basically what I can say so far. Thank you. Thank you, Guillermo. Anyone else? Or we have uh, covered all the topics and raised all the questions and now we have some time or we need some time to think about it. OK. 
Okay. Professor Grichar, maybe you can, uh, if no one has anything uh, else, maybe to conclude or... I'm thinking about two directions of a follow-up of this meeting. One, what we can do in our local environment where we live, where we work, where we collaborate with others and see how we can learn and contribute from the other side. The second direction would be about a possible creation of a group having interest in the topic and arrange for, let's say, a next meeting in a few months' time and see how can we report, or what can we report about what's going on. It is non-expensive way of working together. Technology can help us a lot. And now we have a first step accomplished uh, that we know more people than we knew a few weeks ago. Your suggestions in this regard are very helpful. Please let Alexander or myself or any of the speakers know what would you propose? As you have seen in our participants list, we always use the email. We would like to make sure that the contacts are as direct as possible. And if you have any suggestion to any one of the group, just use email and collaborate. So the contribution would be for network. For example, in Slovenia, we have so-called e-seniors network. By e-seniors, we mean seniors who are often using internet and have interest in the matter. <laughs> we will have a Zoom meeting tomorrow, organized by a library in Slovenia. And there we will discuss what we in Slovenia can do together with the e-seniors. And is, if there is any similar approach you have, please let us know. We would like to learn from you. Excuse me. Alexander, this would be from my side as the thanks to you for the beginning and for the opportunity to maintain the contacts and do something good and smart. Uh, thank you all. And I'm, I'm as, as Joja said, I will really be expecting your ideas and thoughts and uh, to see where to go further. We have had several good ideas, several have several good comments, and I think I will be reaching out to the several of you, trying to find out because we have to. As as uh, as I am working at the faculty, so my job is to research. And uh, I have to do something. So I'll be probably reaching to some of you and maybe we can th find some ideas and go further together. Projects, uh, articles, anything or some cooperation in the future. So yeah, let's keep it together. Let's stay together. And uh, if any of you anything needs anything from, from the side of Croatia, let's or contact me and let me know. Thank you. Uh, so Thank uh, you. I will be, uh, as I said, I will be sending uh, the recordings of the meeting to Joje. He will be putting it on the YouTube channel. Uh, and also Joje will have uh, the comments from the chat. So it will be also saved. So we will have it for the, so we can have some foundation for the next meetings. Thank you all and enjoy your Wednesday and see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.